With Monster Hunter World Iceborne comes Master Rank, a challenge that will test every hunter, but with the right gear and builds, hunters can overcome anything. I'm Dartblade, and we're back with even more amazing builds for Monster Hunter World Iceborne. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at 4-set beginner builds for the Insect Glaive. The Insect Glaive is one of the most maneuverable weapons in the game, but this is because it is a master when it comes to airborne combat. When in disguise, it's able to move around, attacking a monster, whilst at the same time avoiding most of the monster's attacks. So its mobility in the air also lends itself to its awesome defense. However, the weapon could be considered a little bit complex when it comes to using the Kinsect and the various Kinsect buffs you can give yourself. But once you've learned how it all works, the Insect Glaive could be considered a very satisfying weapon. The builds I use tend to focus on all aspects of the Insect Glaive, providing you with a vast selection to choose from. Now a disclaimer though for this series, as Iceborne is still young, most hunters may not have had time to farm everything they need for the most high-end endgame builds, so this series will instead focus on 4-set beginner builds, highlighting some of the amazing armor designs while at the same time helping new Iceborne players get through to the end of the main story. As a result, these builds do not feature Elder Dragon loot or augmentations, and most of the customizations with them come in the form of different jewels, charms, and weaponry. So the first build I use is the Bear Totus Ice build. The Bear Totus armor has been featured in a lot of beginner builds, but this is because the set is a wonderful beginner set. It comes with awesome quality of life skills combined with a few DPS ones. The main downside about the Bear Totus set is you're restricted to using ice weapons, so you have to take into account a monster's elemental weaknesses. Nonetheless, as I said, this is a great beginner set. So for this you'll need the entire Bear Totus set, which includes the Bear Helm Alpha, Mel Alpha, Van Braces Alpha, Coil Alpha and Greaves Alpha. I'm also using a Master's Charm 4, although if you're going through Iceborne Story for the first time this will only be a Master's Charm 3. And for my weapon I'm using the Bear Glaive 2. This is the Insect Glaive found in the Bear Totus tree. As for your jewels, you've got a few to play around with here. Firstly, I've gone for Tenderizer jewels to max out Weakness Exploit. I've then gone for a Frost jewel to max out the Ice Attack skill. I've then gone for a sharp jewel to provide us with that protective polish skill. And finally, there's a few jewels left to play around with to which you can use whatever you want. I went for enhancer jewels to give us a little bit of power prolonger. So, if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which will be 200 health when you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables. You'll have an attack of 822 with white sharpness. You'll have 20% affinity, which will be higher on a hunt thanks to weakness exploit. Potentially it can be 70% so long as you're attacking monster weak points and those said weak points have been tenderized through clutch claw attacks first. You have an ice attack of 600 and when it comes to your defense you're strong against ice and dragon, neutral against water but weak to fire and thunder. As for the skills you have ice attack level 6, ice attack increases the ice rating of a build increasing the ice damage. You have earplugs level 5, this is built into the gear, earplugs allows us to completely ignore any monster roars so this is a great quality of life skill as it allows you to continue attacking a monster when they're roaring during their animation and on the insect glaive ignoring monster roars also prevents you from being knocked out of the skies when you're performing airborne moves. You have Critical Eye at level 4, although this will be level 3 if you're going through Monster Hunter World Iceborne Story for the first time. Critical Eye basically increases our affinity by a set percentage. You have Health Boost level 3. Health Boost increases our maximum health to that potential 200. You have Weakness Exploit level 3. Weakness Exploit increases our affinity by a set percentage when we're attacking monster weak points. This is increased even further should you be able to tenderize that monster weak point first. You have Power Prolonger level 2. It would have been nice to get this higher. Basically, Power Prolonger increases the duration at which our Kinsect buffs remain active. Although with the changes to the Insect Glaive, being able to charge up the Kinsect and collect multiple Kinsect extracts at once, Power Prolonger isn't as needed as it was in the base version of Monster Hunter World. Anyway, you'll have Aquatic Polar Mobility level 2. This is a byproduct of the gear, but allows us to move through water and deep snow with minimal restriction. You'll have Stamina Surge level 1, again a byproduct of the gear but allows us to restore our stamina at a quicker rate. And that is useful for the Insect Glaive as we consume a lot of stamina when performing airborne manoeuvres. And finally you have Protective Polish level 1. Protective Polish allows us to put a protective coating over our sharpness gauge, preventing any sharpness loss for a small duration of time. So there you have it. As you can see it is a pretty straightforward build, utilising a variety of skills. We have a few defensive ones thanks to health boost, we have a few quality of life ones thanks to earplugs and power prolonger, and we have DPS ones thanks to critical eye, weakness exploit and ice attack. Of course, like I said, this build works best against monsters who are weak to ice, so taking into account a monster's elemental weaknesses is definitely advisable. Nonetheless, as I've stated before, the Bear Totus set is personally one of my favourite beginner sets in the game, and I highly recommend it. 
Anyway, let's move on to the next set, which is the Rathalos Fire Build. This build makes use of the Rathalos set, which benefits weapons that have high raw attack, as well as the fire element. It's also personally one of my favourite looking armour sets in the game. So for this build you'll need the entire Raffalos set, which includes the Raffalos Helm Alpha, Mel Alpha, Van Braces Alpha, Coil Beta and Greaves Alpha. I'm also using a Handicraft Charm 3 and for my weapon I'm using the Glavinous Helldate, which is found in the Glavinous Insect Glaive tree. As for your jewels, you've got a few to play around with here. Firstly, I've gone for a Handicraft Jewel to get our sharpness up a little bit. I've then gone for Enhancer Jewels to provide us that protective polish, Vitality Jewels to max up the health boost, a Blaze Jewel to increase our fire attack a little bit, and a Sharp Jewel for that protective polish. So if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which will be 200 health as always when you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables. You have an attack of 890 with purple sharpness. You have 5% affinity, although this will be 55% affinity when you're on a hunt and you're going for monster weak points and you've tenderized those weak points first. You have a fire rating of 530. And when it comes to your defense, you're strong against fire, water and ice, but you're weak against thunder and dragon. As for the skills, you have fire attack level 6. Fire attack basically increases the fire rating of our build as well as the fire damage. You have handicraft level 5. Handicraft basically increases the sharpness of our build and it grants us that purple sharpness with the Glavinous Insect Glaive. You have attack boost at level 4. Attack boost increases our raw attack, but at level 4 or above, it also provides us an extra 5% affinity. So when going for attack boost, you always want to try to get to at least level 4. You have health boost level 3, weakness exploit level 3, power prolonger level 2, slinger capacity level 2. This is a byproduct of the gear, but allows us to carry more slinger ammunition. You have jump master level 1. This is again a byproduct of the gear, but prevents knockback when we're performing jumping attacks and you'll have Protective Polish, level one. You'll also have the Raphalos Essence set bonus, Mind's Eye, which prevents our attacks from bouncing off a monster's hide. So as you can see, this is a fairly strong DPS build. It doesn't have as many quality of life skills as the previous build, but nonetheless, it's definitely more powerful thanks to the fire attack being combined with the attack boost. If a monster is weak to the fire element, then this build is going to tear through them quite quickly. But anyway, let's move on to the next build, which is the Fogel Anginaf Thunder build. This makes use of the entire Fogel Anginaf set, which provides us an interesting set bonus that is very useful for the Insect Glaive in Stamina Cap Up. So for this build, you need the entire Fogel Anginaf set, which includes the Fogel Helm Beta, Mel Beta, Lambraces Alpha, Coil Alpha, and Grease Beta. I'm also using a Handicraft Charm 3, and for my weapon, I'm using the Kadachi Fury 2, which is found in a Toby Kadachi Insect Glaive tree. As for your jewels, you've got a few to play around with here. Firstly, I've gone for Vitality Jewels for that maxed out health boost. I've then gone for Expert Jewels for some Critical Eye. I've then gone for some Handicraft Jewels to get us to that purple sharpness. They came with some byproducts in the form of a Protection Jewel and a Medicine Jewel. I've then gone for a Sharp Jewel to provide us that protective polish. And finally, I've gone for a Flight Jewel to give us that airborne skill. So if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which will be 200 health and 200 stamina when you're on a hunt and you've taken all your relevant consumables. You have an attack of 760 with purple sharpness. You have 20% affinity, which will be 70% when you're on a hunt and attacking monster weak points that have been tenderized beforehand. You have a thunder rating of 480, and as for your defense, you're strong against thunder, neutral against dragon, but weak to the other elements. As for the skills, you have handicraft level 5, thunder attack level 4, Thunder Attack basically increases the Thunder Rating and damage of this build. It would have been nice to get this higher, but we are limited. You have Health Boost Level 3, Weakness Exploit Level 3, Item Prolonger Level 3. This is a byproduct of the armor we're wearing, but is useful, especially when combined with Protective Polish. Item Prolonger allows buffs to remain active for longer durations, and this does apply to Protective Polish. You have Critical Eye Level 2, Stun Resistance Level 1. Stun Resistance is a byproduct, it allows us to resist stun effects a little bit. You have Recovery Up Level 1. This is a byproduct of our jewels. It basically increases how much we heal through healing methods like taking a potion. You have Airborne Level 1. Airborne increases our damage when we're performing airborne attacks, which is great for the Insect Glaive. And whilst, yes, the Insect Glaive does the most damage whilst on the ground, having the Flight Jewel, which provides us that airborne skill, makes fighting in the air a lot more viable. You have Divine Blessing Level 1, which is a byproduct of our jewels. It goes up to level 3 here because I do have some protection jewels in my mantle. Divine Blessing allows us to take reduced damage sometimes when we take a hit. You have Flinch Fury level 1. This is a byproduct of the gear, but allows us to resist minor knockbacks a little bit. And you have Protective Polish level 1. As for the set bonuses, you'll have Anginaf's Dominance, Stamina Cap Up, increasing our maximum stamina to that potential 200. And this, combined with the Flight Jewel, means that this build works wonderful in the air. 
staying in the air consumes our stamina and having that increased stamina bar works wonders. So there you have it. As you can see, again, it is an elemental build though, so you have to take into account a monster's elemental weaknesses, but this is one for players who like to stay in the air. Obviously, being in the air, you get that natural defense of a monster struggling to hit you. This also means that you can keep up with flying monsters quite easily as well. I would say that if you do prefer the airborne playstyle of the Insect Glaive, then you might want to consider taking a Flight Jaw with some of the other builds, but I tend to do the majority of my DPS with the Insect Glaive whilst grounded. Anyway, let's move on to our fourth and final build, which again is one of my personal favourites, which is the Ebony Adogaron Dragon build. This makes use of the entire Ebony Adogaron set, as well as the Ebony Adogaron weapon, which comes with natural high affinity, and we don't have to worry whatsoever about sharpness, which allows us to invest in different skills and duels. So for this build, you need the entire Death Goron armor set, which includes the Helm Beta, Mel Beta, Braces Beta, Coil Beta, and Grease Beta. I'm also using the Marathon Charm 2, and for my weapon, I'm using the Deadline Insect Glaive, which is found in the Ebony Adogaron tree. As for your jewels, you've got quite a few to play around with here. First of all, I've gone for Dragon Jewels to max out the Dragon Rating of this build. I've then gone for Tenderizer Jewels to max out Weakness Exploit, an Expert Jewel for some Critical Eye, a Sprinter Jewel to max out Marathon Runner. This also came with the byproduct of an Expert Jewel attached to it. I've then gone for Vitality Jewels, two of which had byproducts in the form of a Throttle Jewel, which provides us a little bit of extra latent power, and an Enhancer Jewel to provide us a little bit of power for longer. So if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which will be 200 health when you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables. You'll have an attack of 791 with a maxed out white sharpness. You have 50 base affinity, which will actually be 100% affinity when you're on a hunt and you're attacking monster weak points that have been tenderized beforehand. You have a dragon rating of 460 with high elder seal. And when it comes to your defense, unfortunately, you're weak against every element except for dragon to which you are incredibly strong and resistant to. As for your skulls, you have Dragon Attack at level 6. Dragon Attack basically increases the Dragon Damage and Rating of a build. You have Critical Eye level 5, Health Boost level 3, Weakness Exploit level 3, Latent Power level 3. This is a combination of byproducts of the armor as well as jewels. Latent Power is a buff that will activate after you've been fighting a monster for a set amount of time. When it does activate, it will increase your affinity by a large amount as well as reduce your stamina consumption. So great for when you're in the air. Anyway, you have Marathon Runner level 3. Marathon Runner reduces the stamina consumption of this build, so it's a great alternative to that stamina cap up skill found in the other build if you like to make use of the airborne playstyle, as it will allow you to stay in the air for longer periods. You have Power Prolonger level 2, Tool Specialist level 2. Tool Specialist is a byproduct of the gear, but reduces the cooldown on our mantles and such. You have Dragon Resistance level 1, a byproduct of the gear, but provides us a little bit of extra dragon resistance. And finally, you'll have the Adogaron Essence set bonus, Protective Polish, which acts the same as the Sharp Jewel. So it allows us to put a protective coating over our sharpness gauge, preventing any sharpness loss for a small duration of time. So as you can see, this is a fairly strong build with high affinity. Uh, unfortunately, it comes at the cost of having a lower raw attack, but if you take into account a monster's weaknesses, if they're weak to dragon, the increased dragon rating makes up for this. Now, one thing I would suggest, if you're willing to, is to drop one of the jewels in favor of a flight jewel, which will give you that airborne skill, especially if you prefer to stay in the air with the insect glaive. Like I said, I tend to stay on the ground, so I don't go for the airborne skill as much. But as always, with Monster Hunter World, the choice is up to you. Nonetheless, I found this a great build to use, especially when the monster was weak to the dragon element. But there we have it. Those are four set beginner builds that I use for the Insect Glaive in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Now, of course, there are a lot more endgame mix sets to come. And as I always say, you don't have to use what is shown in these videos. Use what you want to use, as most tasks in Monster Hunter World Iceborne can be taken on with any item and gear set. Also, builds taken from previous seasons can still work in Iceborne, at least for early game. They'll have the DPS, but they may lack the survivability. But anyway, I hope you found this video helpful or informative. And until next time, I've been Darkblade, bringing you four set beginner builds for the Insect Glaive in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and like for more.